tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. What's up, St. Louis? We are back. This is week four, I believe. And it's been going real, real fast. Hope everybody doing real good out here on this Memorial Day weekend. It's Sunday. And I know a lot of you all went to church. Everybody back. People are starting to get back into the church house. People are starting to do events. People are starting to go places. Um, you know, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, I'm just excited that uh, we're not out the weeds yet. So uh, I don't want anybody to think we out the weeds. But welcome back to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. Uh, we got a special guest today. Uh, as you know, all my guests are special guests. And uh, we're going to have a good conversation today. Uh, we have uh, a former legislator from the great state of Missouri. Um, he, see, I let the cat out the bag. I said he. So he actually um, succeeded his dad in the position that he served in. And uh, he's going to talk to us about, you know, his career in politics um, I don't think he's done. Uh, you know, he had a, he had a, he had a, he had a run. He had a run at a Senate that, that didn't come out the way we wanted it to, but we'll, uh, give him a chance to speak to that as well and just talk and see what he has going on. And I keep saying he, I ain't said his name yet, but I'm gonna bring him on the screen. Uh, we have with us today, Reverend. Tommy Pearson Jr. Yes, sir. What's up, uh, Tommy, man? Hey, well, man. Hey, welcome to the Politics Podcast, man. Hey, you my, it. you are my fourth guest on my man, show, man. Special. I feel you know? special, you know. In yeah. baseball, the fourth hitter <laughs> in the lineup. <laughs> you so clean up. Hits, so that, that's what we're going after today. Yes, so I appreciate it. I appreciate you being yeah. uh, allowing me. Of what I hope to be a long-standing oh yeah uh, position here to fill in the area of uh, just informing the folks on what's going on in, in St. Louis politics. So I appreciate it. Absolutely, man. You know that's my whole goal, man. When I when I created the show, man. You know I was. You know, you know, you see all the shows we got. You know, you got your your shows that come on the radio, and then you you got all the mess. You know, but. Mm -hmm. I think uh, St. Louis is much greater than the mess that's always talked about, man. So I wanted to make sure I highlighted, um, you know, the positive things that was going on in our community. And I also want to introduce people uh, who not normally own the TV all the time and all that to the world, man. So, you know, because my show is heard all over, you know, it's not just in St. Louis, man. And so I appreciate you coming in and you, you one of the positive people that I always have seen, um, you know, just doing something positive, not only just for your community, man, but you're a family man, you're a husband, you're a pastor, you're a son, you're an yeah. uncle, you know. <laughs> so, you know, um, it's always good to to prop the positivity up in our community, man. And so yeah. uh, if you just tuned in, uh, we are uh, sitting down with former state representative Tommy Pearson, Jr., uh, Reverend, the good Reverend, and uh, he's gonna. We're just gonna have a conversation today uh, with uh, Reverend Tommy Pearson, man. And so, uh, Reverend Pearson, I'm calling you Tommy. Tommy. I'm calling you Tommy, man. Call we kick, Tommy, man. we, <laughs> <laughs> we kicking it today, man. This sun, this Sunday afternoon, man. Memorial yes, Day sir. weekend, man. So, kind of tell our listening audience who you are, man, and just kind of, I guess, take us through your life. In two minutes, let's see. Let's see. Let's see, let's see if you can do that for us. Let us know where you. Let us know where you came from and, and where you are and where you're going. Interesting. In two minutes, that <laughs> is a challenge, especially for someone who has Reverend in front of their name. That's right. But, but let's see what we can do. That's right. Uh, I, I am born and raised here in St. Louis. Uh, blessed. 
blessed to uh, have loving parents who, you know, are still around. Thank God for that. Who have molded me and shaped me to have a a love for people. And so I, I will say that, you know, the crux of the things that I've been able to do uh, in this life journey has been uh, revolving around a love for people. So um, went to, you know, graduated from high school, went to college here at Wash Washington University here in St. Louis, got a degree in math, um, went away to Cincinnati to study biostatistics. And so I did that, uh, started working uh, there in Cincinnati at, for Johnson & Johnson, and then made my way back to St. Louis once I found uh, a young lady who I couldn't let get away. <laughs> That's right. And, and she made me. I shouldn't say that. She, she, and I, I, I was intrigued. He was intrigued. My way back to St. Louis. <laughs> so, so I started working at Boeing. I uh, started working there. I uh, worked there for about six years. And then the Lord called me into the ministry. So I went to the ministry um, and worked in the ministry. I uh, was able to do that full time for a while. Uh, and then went into education. So I taught math. Okay. Uh, here in the Hazelwood School District. And, and I did that. Uh, for a while, um, and uh, then felt the calling to go into uh, into elected office. You stated that my father was a uh, former state representative before me. He decided to run for a different office, uh, and the opportunity to succeed him uh, in or as uh, the next state representative uh, was there, and folks began to ask if that was something that I would be interested in doing. At first I said no. <laughs> um, and at first my wife had a word before no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, was that word hot? Was that word hot? Did it have some heat to it? It, it was heck. <laughs> it was heck. It, it was heck no. Um, <laughs> but we prayed about it. And the Lord uh, softened her, her heart and, and we were able to, to move forward and uh, ran for state representative in the 66th district here in North County. Uh, we were able to serve in Jefferson City for four years. As you mentioned, uh, ran for state senate, came up short. Uh, that was a year ago. And um, and so here we are. Um, so I think my two minutes are up. <laughs> Uh, now, man, you that's just kind of a quick. Uh, yeah, you, quick, you you did you did kind of you did good, good man, and and, and you filled in all those gaps, man, because um you know sometimes when you are an elected official, people only know what they know in that moment. Sometimes they don't know the the history of what you've done before, and sometimes some people don't know what you're doing outside of uh politics. Sometimes you know, sometimes when people meet you in politics, that's all they know. And, uh, you know, I know your family. We got history. Uh, yes, I ran, I ran yes, against sir. your pops when I first, uh, got into politics. Uh, yeah. but, but me and your dad, man, had a, man, we had probably one of the best talks I think I've ever had with a man. Um, yeah. and that was, um, at the actual polls. So, you know, people was, uh, running, going in, voting and me and him. And that's one thing I like about your dad, man. Your dad, whether somebody running against them or, or whatever, your dad's still going to talk to him. You know what I'm saying? Even even if people don't even like like your daddy, but they talk to him, your daddy's still going to talk to him, man. And that's one thing I really admire about your pops, man. But me and him had a, man, we had a great talk, you know. And and I, I straight up told your dad, I said, hey, but I ain't got nothing against you. I just want to serve too, you know what I'm saying? And but he told me, he said, "Man, you get with me uh, after this over." So he already had in his head he's gonna beat me. So he <laughs> he was like, he said, "You get with me after this over, man, and you stick with me, man, and I, I can I can show you some things and you know mentor you and all that." And he 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 kept his word, man, you know, and and he did beat me, you know, but <laughs> but but that's one of them things though, man. In politics, man, people do not. Some people don't know how to like just get over like okay I lost now it's time to go do something else like it's not the end of the world uh, it's not gonna be the first time you lose something um, but but and I don't even look at it as a loss man I look at it as a lesson you know what I'm saying right. I I don't never right. I don't ever feel like I've lost anything 
um, when things didn't come out the way I, I wanted them to to come out, man. But it's been a it's been a blessing, um, you know, yeah. being around you, your family, man, your wife and your dad and your mom, man. And interestingly enough, man, I don't know if you uh, know, but you got a cousin, I think that that's a YouTuber. And yes, sir. And, and yes, sir. me and me and my wife, we <laughs> me and my wife, we got a YouTube channel too. So we do food reviews. See, yes, that's sir. another life. You know what I'm saying? I'm versatile, man. Yeah. But, <laughs> but but I, I met a I met your cousin on uh, YouTube because the YouTube the YouTube community, like when you a creator, mm-hmm. we like kind of network and stuff like that. And she um, she knew that I was from St. Louis. She was on one of my videos and stuff like that. And then we yeah. made the connection. I'm like, oh, that's wild, you know. <laughs> right. So so they were in they were in town for some type of family function, mm-hmm. and um, she said, you know, I got to go and 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 meet you know this fellow YouTuber and this that and the other. I said, well, who is it? Who is it? Right. And and said your name. I said, oh wow. <laughs> I know him. I said, good. I said, good to know Terry Woods. Uh, so I said, I know him, and, and they were excited to be able to connect and do all of that. Yeah. So, like you say, versatile. It's, it's good to be versatile, good to be out here. And you have that personality for it, man, anyway. So, I already knew it would, it would be successful. So, oh, yeah, yes. man. We, we, hey, we only live one life, man. And, you know, we, we shouldn't live with regrets. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, when you get an idea, you know, this for everybody that's out there listening. If, if you get an idea about something uh, and you want to do it, hey, do it. You know, it's only it's only one or two things gonna happen. You gonna be successful, or you ain't go or you ain't gonna be as successful as you thought you was gonna be. <laughs> it's a lesson in all. It's a lesson in all of it. Yeah. So, man, let's uh let's talk about um. Let's talk about your political journey, man, because uh, when you did get elected, it was a three way. It was a three way race when you ran. Right. I think it was in yes. 27. Yes. Was it 2017 when you uh, it was, time go by uh, so fast, man? I can't even remember. It, it was 2015. So 2015. 16 to 20. OK. OK. Mm-hmm. Or 16 to 19, 16, 17. And then 18, 19. So, um, yeah. So so it was it was that four year stretch. OK. And yeah, so that that first uh, that first election it was a, it was a three way race. Yeah. And um, yeah, so we were able to come out successful there. I didn't know all of what I was getting into going yeah. going to Jeff City. I don't um, think I don't think nobody do when. I don't think, exactly. <laughs> I don't think anybody does when when, when they it, it's it, it's a different world. It, yeah. it, it really is. It's a different world. Um, but but I went there to you know people of the. Is the the love of people, the passion for people, uh, to, to do some good for people. That was always on my heart. And, you know, one of the things that I remember as that freshman legislator, uh, one of the guys uh, in, in one of the early meetings we had, he was like, you know, the three words I'm going to give you to focus on, <laughs> you know, I guess in real estate is location, location, location. Right. <laughs> and he said it's relationships, relationships, and relationships. Yeah. And so that was something that, that stuck with me. Uh, and so that ability to meet people, talk to people, uh, try to find some common ground and yeah. some common lanes, yeah. you know, being a part of the super minority in uh, Jefferson City yeah. uh, was just something that I looked to uh, to do as we tried to get a few things done there in, in Jefferson City uh, for the people. So then I was able to, to move up in leadership there in our Democratic caucus there uh, in Jefferson City. Um just to, to provide leadership for, you know, a group of Democratic legislators who were coming together from across the state there in Jefferson City. So it, it, it was definitely a, a, a great opportunity yeah. um, to, to meet folks, to again, establish those relationships and, and you know, make, get, some, get some small victories uh, along the way. Oh, yeah, abso- absolutely, man. And, and uh, it's... It's funny you mentioned that that whole thing relationship 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 because I had a my first actual guest was my mother uh, mm-hmm. on the show and and one, wise man. yes sir yes sir <laughs> and and one one of the big things that we talked about uh, was relationships and relationship mm-hmm. building and the importance of that especially 
in politics, man, because you can't truly get anything done by yourself. Yeah. And and you have to have those relationships. And one thing I noticed about you uh, when you went to Jeff City, um, you made sure you built those relationships and you built some unique relationships. Uh, I remember, I recall a time when um, you had uh, your town hall and you brought um, the Missouri Conservation Department down here. And, you know, a lot of people in our community aren't really familiar with uh, what, um, you know, the Missouri conservation does and nature and all that type of stuff. But I saw that you was willing to learn, man. And you got out there, you got your hands dirty. I saw you was in rural Missouri. And so you were able to bring that knowledge back, um, to St. Louis County, uh, in an urban area, uh, and kind of be versatile, you know, uh, when you're serving, man. And so that was one thing I really admired about you. You wasn't afraid to, to jump outside the norm. Cause I know some people, man, they get up there and they just stick with the black hole and, right. and, and that's it. And, 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 you know, as, 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 as black people, as folks from the urban core or whatever we get called, you know, we, we still, we, we are more interested, we are interested in um, how the police treat us. Yeah. You know, we, we, we are interested in, in education, but, but we are holistic. You know, we're interested in every facet of Missouri government. Absolutely. And so that, that was, you know, I had to ask myself because I got appointed to the Natural Resources and Conservation Committee. Yeah. And, and I had to say to myself, okay, why, why am I here? Yeah. You know, here's this guy from North St. Louis. Mm -hmm. why, why am I on this committee? Right. And, but it was an opportunity to learn. It was an opportunity to, to grow. It was an opportunity to find out, you know, we have a, a conservation center in North County. Yeah. You know, we have uh, a Department of Conservation right close to where the Missouri Veterans Home is on 367. Right. You know. So, so we have all of these things that are in our community that we don't really know much about, and um, yet they impact us uh, on a daily basis. And and then it began to turn into, okay, so how can we utilize and use these things in a way that can be a benefit uh, to the community and expose even some of our younger folks to conservation, right. to all of these types of things. Um, because I believe all of those, they go hand in hand. Absolutely. You know, an appreciation for what's going on around you and nature and all of that right. can help alleviate stress and, Absolutely. and things of that nature. So, man, all, all of it, it I agree, it, it was a learning opportunity is what I took it as, an opportunity to learn and grow and not just me grow, but then help use what I've been able to learn uh, to help others. So that, that's, that's what it's about. Yeah, man. So, so what was, so being in Jeff city, being away from your family Monday through Thursday, um, was it six months out of the year? Uh, and then sometimes uh, longer than that with special session. Uh, what, what was, what was one of the hardest things about not even just the political part of, of being a state rep, but what was one of the hardest things about, um, being a state representative, man, uh, at the time that you were a state representative, what was, what was, give me two things, two, two things that was just probably the most challenging that you would say, uh, while serving, um, up, up there in the house. I'll, I'll give one that's common and mm -hmm. I'll give one that was probably unique to my situation. So one that was common is certainly family mm -hmm. and developing a different rhythm that we had to develop as a family. And so, you know, being a, a family man, I have, uh, you know, two sons, a daughter. They were, two of them were in high school, junior high and elementary. So, so we kind of had to develop a different rhythm. And I had to learn how to prioritize them in a different way. So, you know, I, I had to make sure that I continued to be dad and was there for them, but just there for them in a different way. Yeah. Um, so, so that was one challenge that, that we were able to overcome, find what that rhythm was and, and make it work for us. You know, one of the, I guess, kind of unique challenges I was, 
on the uh, committee as we were looking into the you know the, the mess that was happening with our former governor. Right. And 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 that opened my eyes in a whole different way as it related to um, just the level of um, the the intensity that <laughs> different outside groups have even on Missouri politics. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we see an individual and really think it's about that individual, but not really having an understanding of all of the people, the hands, the groups, the organizations yeah. that have been involved in moving and putting that individual where they are. Yeah. And so really seeing that, what was a, a, an interesting and kind of a unique uh, experience to be a part of during that uh, during my tenure there uh, in Jefferson City. Yeah, that's the hey man. I tip my hat off because you know I was t- I was talking to my wife uh, the other day and I was like, man, you know, I really did want to be a state rep then, <laughs> um, but when you know when they say God got another plan for you, man. I think God knew what he was doing when, when, when I didn't go up there, you know, and I, I see everything that I see the challenges that you all go through. Um, just, just trying to do simple things, you know, and it's, and it's tough. And I think our community, uh, has a, has a tough time really dealing with what a state rep does, what a state Senator does versus a city councilman and a mayor. Because I know sometimes you got probably a lot of times you got calls that were pretty much local issues, but you kind of feel obligated. Like I, I, I represent these people. So I got to at least come up with an answer or some type of solution uh, mm-hmm. for them, man. So, so how did you kind of navigate through those uh, different uh, requests that came to, <laughs> came to your office, your email, your phone out on the street in the uh, grocery store? Uh, how, yeah. how did you kind of, Make the how did you navigate through through those different uh, layers of uh, requests from folks? Because I know I know you the right. type that want to help everybody, but right when, when and, knowing and, your role, man, it's different. Yeah, yeah, and and we certainly in our office tried to to, to, to ensure that while we were not able to um, directly engage in every one of the calls that came to our office, we wanted to make sure that those individuals who made those calls got serviced. Yeah. And so it, it again, kind of came down to those relationships. So, yeah. you know, if it was a legal concern, then who, who do we know? Who can we call to ensure that this is what it needs to be? Right. And and then that, that loop gets closed. And if it's a, you know, if it's a municipal issue, so I can call the mayor right. and, and have a good relationship with the mayor to say, look, this is what's going on. Can you help so-and-so? Right. Nine, out of t- nine times out of ten, they know who so-and-so is. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and probably have already had a few uh, conversations with so-and-so. Right. right? So, so then we in our office don't have to kind of spin our wheels doing some things that have already uh, taken place. So, so, so really being... What, what I found to be effective as a legislator is, is to really be able to have the relationships in place to be able to make phone calls to people and not have to say, oh, this is, you know, this is Tommy from, but, you know, Tommy Pearson Jr., this is representative, right. you know, so-and-so. <laughs> I could just say this Tommy and, right. then, and then have that conversation. And then hopefully that then kind of bumps up Mm-hmm. That issue, yeah. Uh, on behalf of what the constituents' concern was, yeah, man, and um, I, and mm-hmm. I think you, I think you did a real good job, um, as state rep in terms of those relationships and keeping that that line of communication, especially in your district. Um, it wasn't an elected official in your district that could really truly say, you know, I couldn't get the time if I needed to, or or mm-hmm. or Tommy didn't come support a ribbon cutting or basketball uh reveal <laughs> you know uh, graduations uh cuz you yeah. you had what was it two school was it no was it, was it three school districts that you represented right 
Hazelwood, mm-hmm. Jenny. Yeah, actually, it was four. It was so four. Because the district has a little bit of St. Louis City. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, so we have St. Louis, Louis Public School. A little sliver of, of St. Louis City. Yeah. We had a little bit of Jennings. Mm-hmm. All the, pretty much all the Riverview. Riverview, yeah. And then Hazelwood. Yeah. So primarily Hazelwood East. And so, yeah, so it, it, it required, uh, you know, an opportunity yeah. to get to know all of those superintendents. Right. And that's kind of how I saw it as an opportunity, you know, to get to know them, have relationships with them, uh, and see how we could be helpful to them uh, in Jefferson City because, you know, those are the people who, the things that we did, did in Jefferson, that's who it will affect. Right. You know, so if, if we come up with some type of legislation uh, that they were aware of, and it would impact them in some kind of negative way, then they immediately knew it, and were able to say, "Look, this is this is how that affects us," and uh, and hope that you vote accordingly. Right. You know? and, and, then, <laughs> and then you go from there. You will be amazed at how many people hope that you vote accordingly. Yeah. You know? um, they probably won't say it like that. Right. But, uh, yeah. but they they'll definitely they'll definitely say it in a way where you kind of get it though. You get it. Yeah. 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 <laughs> You get it. So, so, so you were an educator. Uh, you had experience in business. Um, you just had a you had a variety of experiences before uh, being a state uh, representative, man. So, how important would you say it is uh, for someone going into, uh, let's say, uh, being a state rep or a senator? How important do you think it is in having all of the <clears throat> having a variety of experiences? Um, going into uh, being a state legislator, like how important is that when it comes to you making decisions and coming up with legislations and stuff like that? Yeah. I, I think it's very important. You know, it's very important that you have the ability to know to know what you know and then know what you don't know. Right. And and to be confident in those things, so not feeling like you have to know it all. Right. Um, but you are confident in what expertise you bring to, to the team, to the table, whatever, and then have the ability to say, you know, I, I, I don't know, I can find out or, or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, but, but it's always good to know what it is that that person brings to, you know, as your representative, as the one who is representing you before a different body. Uh, is is to know what they bring with them, yeah. um, and so it, it it certainly is important. You know, one of the things that off, that I was shocked by was the range of topics that the legislature deals with. Yeah, because you deal with you know things folks know, you know, education and you know police reform and voting rights and elections and then you got the nature stuff the you know feral hogs and, and all this kind of <laughs> stuff I, I was like what what kind of hog is that you know so it, it, it's amazing just the wide range of, of topics that uh, come at you not to m- mention some of the utility stuff and, yeah and that was kind of a whole different language to to, to learn and then budgets and finances and, and all of that. So, you know, to be able to be versed in those things is certainly, um, and, and to be able to be versed in those things quickly yeah. and, and, and to, to have that to where, you know, you, you're not there long, yeah. you know, <laughs> and if it take you five years to figure out, you know, how to get an amendment on the bill, then, <laughs> just wait for five years, you know. So, and then it's time to come back home. Then, then it's time to come back home. And, and <laughs> yeah. So it, it it's it's very it's very important. You know, it's good to um, to know who it is that that you're sending to ensure that they have that uh, that, that background. That makes sense. We're gonna take a quick thirty second break. We'll be back. We got our former state representative. He's still my state rep. Uh, the Reverend Tommy Pearson will be, (laughs) we'll be back in just a second. This is the hip hop gardener from Blackberry landscaping. 
And when I'm ever listening to an app or podcast shows, I'm listening to the hottest show in the loop, the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. You better ask somebody. This is Chloe with Vassals Comfort Shoes and Custom Insoles, your diabetic shoe supplier in St. Louis. You're listening to the hottest show in the loop, the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. Tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. All right, we are back. We've been having a great conversation with my man, Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr., former state representative of the 66th District, pastor of, is it In Step? Church. In step church. In step yes, church. Sir. Yes, sir. The son of the legendary Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr., mayor of the great city of Bell Fountain. Want to welcome everybody back. If you're just now tuning in, having a great conversation uh, with my man Tommy. So, so brother Pearson, I gotta ask you this. So we talked about the importance of relationships. How difficult was it getting all of the Democrats on the same page? And cause I, you know, <laughs> it's funny that I'm asking that, but you, you, you think with a super minority, uh, it, it would be a tight knit group. Um, but I know sometimes it don't go off that way because, um, you have a lot of different facets that go into the democratic caucus. Uh, if you would, if you would, so you got, you got females, you got males, you have black, you got white, uh, you have the LGBT community. Um, I don't know. Do we have any Hispanic, um, members of the caucus? Not doing my not time. doing it. Okay. And so, and then you got a couple of people that, that might not be from St. Louis. So you got St. Louis versus Kansas city. Then you got rural versus uh, urban. Then you got St. Louis city versus St. Louis County. So everybody got all their issues, but we are all in the umbrella, the big tent of uh, the democratic party. Uh, so, <laughs> How was it, man, when it came to, uh, you know, really just coming together on, on certain issues uh, with the Democratic Party? I ain't even talking about reaching across the aisle. I'm talking about right in our backyard with the party, man. How um, how difficult was that? And, and did you have any successes? And, and, and did you have some challenges? Kind of speak to that. Yeah, so it, it could be... Um it could be described as, you know, herding cats in the dark room. You know, <laughs> it, it, it would be a lot of time coordinating. You know, one of the things that, that I try to ensure that we had, because we had a lot of different personalities, a lot of, you know, when you are an elected official, you have been very busy talking about yourself. Right. You know, and you see your name on signs and billboards <laughs> and everything else and, and, and all of this. And now you kind of have to put that aside to come together with this, with a, a group and try to work together. And, you know, one of the things that I would always emphasize is, is respect and respect. Number one, what people bring, what their lived experience has been, what has brought them uh, there. And, and to respect their perspective. And, and perhaps you are able to learn something different as you listen to a different perspective. But there should be, as we would leave the caucus room, or whatever <laughs> the case may be, those things that should always keep us connected in some, in some form. Absolutely. Fashion. You know, the, the, the general welfare of the people and ensuring that that is front and center in the things that we do and say and how we vote. If you can make that connection, 
then those would be some things that we can always be able to look back on and tie us together. Um, and, and so that was always something that I would try to uh, make sure that, that we had as uh, that kind of common bond uh, to lead and keep our caucus moving together and not to fracture over and, and some often kind of smaller stuff, mm-hmm. if you will, uh, as opposed to the big picture. Because most of our fights that I wanted us to have were not with the, the people in the caucus. Right. And, you know, once we would go upstairs and, <laughs> and get out on the floor and, and, and then have those debates and issues uh, with, with, with those who really didn't see eye to eye on many of the issues that came before us as a body. Um, so, you know, that, that as a part of leadership in the caucus, those were certainly some things that I, I, I would have wanted to ensure that, that we had. That's so. cool, yeah. Yeah, man, you you definitely um, were like the peacemaker, I would say. Um, <laughs> you know, you were the voice of reason in a lot of, a lot of things. Um, so what was uh, what was one of your proudest moments, man, serving uh, in the house, man? Um, one of the proudest moments. That is, that's a that's a good question because <laughs> a lot of times, I, honestly, I don't think about you know kind of me a lot, you know? right? But. Um, you know, it, it, it was certainly good to, so so when we started, we didn't have, as an example, mm-hmm. so when, when, when I started, there was nobody from North County on the budget, mm-hmm. right? So that was, that was one thing. And so I said, look, you know, I went to leadership and said, at some point, we're going to have to make a change. This, this is going to have to change. And so when things happened, the opportunities presented themselves. Right. Um, and uh, so I was able to get on the budget and because I saw that as a place where you can kind of make some moves yeah, and, and it not be on the floor in front of everybody. Right. But you can get some money moved into some different places mm-hmm. and, and just know that you got some money moved in some different places. A- absolutely. You know, um, you know, we did some stuff with, with agriculture, Department of Agriculture mm-hmm. as an example. Um, and we move, we're able to move, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars into urban agriculture. Right. And so they put an urban ag um, program together as an example. And then it was a matter of getting some of our urban ag folks to take advantage of it. And they were able to get, get some funds and funding to move some of their projects forward. So, so it, it, it was some, um, you know, some, some victories along that realm that, that we were able to, to just kind of celebrate. You know, I remember the Missouri Technology Corporation, you know, um, entrepreneurship mm-hmm. is something that, you know, I always want to promote because I think if we have folks who will start jobs, um, then they will create jobs and then they are able to hire folks perhaps that, that, that have a similar background experience that they have. Yeah. And so, you know, there was some funding cut from MTC where we get some money restored there, which helped the, the St. Louis ecosystem uh, for uh, entrepreneurship. So just some, some uh, budget victories along those lines were, were some that, immediately kind of come to mind as some things that uh, we were able to, to, to celebrate uh, and, and have an impact in, in the area and in the community. So. Yeah, that's, that's huge, man. I mean, budget is very important. You know, mm-hmm. I, I sit on the, uh, well, I'm the chairman of the ways and means for the city of Jennings, man. And I, I see that, that, I mean, that's the transmission and the engine of, of, <laughs> of, of moving uh, policy and everything in our community, yeah. man. So yeah. it, it all started with the budget. How are we going to pay for it? Where's it going to come that's from? Right. You know, where, the, right. <laughs> where, where money for this at, you know? So that's, right. <clears throat> that's as they say, you know, that is your, that is your priority document. Yeah. You know, while people see it's a lot about money, but it's really about the priorities that you have. Mm-hmm. And 
what you prioritize and right. fun. Right. And so, you know, having the opportunity to have some say in where that $33 billion for the state budget, um, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a big deal, I think. So, yeah. That's what's up, man. So I got a, I got another question for you, man. So I know your, your dad was a big, uh, played a big role in your life. Um, and, and you know, it's, you know, it's, it's good to have a, a father and it's important to have a father in the house. Uh, who, who would you say, give me three people, um, that you would say were a big influence, um, in your life and you, you use a lot of the advice that they taught you, uh, as an adult. So give me, give me three people that you would say was a, a big influence in your life and, and kind of why, you know, briefly why. Gotcha. Um, a couple of incidents, and, and, and two of them are teachers that got come to mind mm -hmm. right off the bat. And, and one was a, a fifth grade teacher mm -hmm. who, and, and I don't recall all the specifics, but he, he posed a question to the group, and everybody went one way and I went the other way mm -hmm. uh, in answering the question. And he talked about that for the rest of the time I was at that school mm -hmm. to instill in me the ability to, even if everybody else is, has answered the question one way, if, if you are able to answer it in a different way and ground it somehow, mm -hmm. then you need to stand on that. Yeah. Um, and, and, and so his name is Mr. May. Uh, another, another teacher um, in high school, Mr. Jenkins, he um, he saw something in me as it relates to just kind of leadership, and he encouraged me to be the graduation speaker. Okay. Right? And so, you know, while I was not the valedictorian or the salutatorian, he encouraged me to, I guess, lobby to be the speaker for graduation. Mm -hmm. And when I was chosen as such, I, I, I saw that as just another opportunity in someone who poured into me and, and saw something in me and, and pushed me uh, to develop that as, as something that has an opportunity to kind of set you apart. Right. right. Um, and of course, you know, the old man, I don't know if I wasn't supposed to, to mention him or not. <laughs> oh, definitely. But, definitely. I'll give... I definitely got to give the old man a shout mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we, our, our relationship has, I'll be honest, it has ebbed and flowed, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that comes as, as a boy turns into a man. Absolutely. And learns how to interact with his father and then a father learning how to interact with, with his son. And, and, and I have enjoyed, I've enjoyed the ride the whole way because love has always been there oh, yeah. you know, the whole time. Yeah. While we may fuss a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, love has been that thing that has kept the, 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 the bond strong. Absolutely. And he has certainly, um, he, he has certainly equipped me in, in so many ways. It's always interesting, I think, when I look back and I would always say, I ain't never being no minister. I ain't being no pastor. I ain't, I'm not doing that. Right. I, you know, I would see some of the stuff that the old man would have to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, with different commissioners and things of that nature. And I said, no, you know, that, I, I, I like to say that's why I, I majored in math because I thought it was the <laughs> furthest thing away, uh, perhaps from ministry. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but it's amazing how, you know, God has a different plan, you know, for yeah. your life. And now we're able to, uh, both be involved in in ministry and having an impact on people's lives. Yeah. Never thought I would be in in uh, in elected office in, in politics, and because of the relationship that I have with my father, you know, it, it, it's amazing that very often the fruit does not fall That's far right. from the tree. <laughs> That's right, and. Um, <laughs> And, and so those opportunities that presented themselves, and, and it's an opportunity to have an impact on people, to have an impact on uh, the community, 
And and really, that's you know that, that's always one of my prayers is to be able to have a positive impact on the li- in the lives of people. And yeah. and so uh, just a few people and a few even some things that seem small kind of as they were happening, mm-hmm. but they have stayed with me, impacted me, and and helped me along the way. You know, I, I because you know you started your podcast with your mother, man. I I, I have to. She I, I I say the old man is the salt and my mother is the sugar. <laughs> you know because <laughs> uh, because she's just her demeanor is is so sweet and this one that you know and I feel like I kind of got a good little mix of both. Oh know, yeah, be oh, salty yeah. when needed, right? But but then be sweet when when you have. When you have to, so, yeah. Uh, so, so man, I, I, I just feel blessed to uh, have, have had uh, different ones and different people, my parents and others uh, in my life, to, uh, to you know, have bring me and brought me to, uh, to, to, to this place. And so, I just appreciate opportunities to give them uh, their shout out, right, you know, give right, them their flowers, if you will, absolutely, um, while while they can smell them, man. So. Uh, <laughs> Appreciate opportunities like this to give back. Ah, right, man, that's a blessing, man. So yeah. we coming down to the end, but I ain't letting you leave yet. <laughs> so you had a you you had a you had a run for the Senate. Um, I know you had a I know you had a little health uh, issue in the midst of, um, and I know things didn't work out how we wanted them to, uh, but they they worked out how how God saw fit. Um, but I know you ain't done, Tommy. <laughs> Tell the people what you're doing right now currently. Yes, sir. So currently, um, I'm a bivocational pastor. So, so I pastor a church, so I mm-hmm. pastor in step church. Um, I do worship in St. Charles. Uh, and then also I am the business development director for, bio rankings which is uh, basically a group of statisticians and software engineers who are working with researchers in medical in the medical field mm-hmm. uh, to help further their research um, so we develop innovative statistical methods uh, to help them solve some of the problems that they have in the research that they're doing so um, and, and we are a startup. We were while we before the pandemic, we were in uh, the Cortex area. Um, after the pandemic, we uh, transitioned to being 100% virtual from home. We'll see where, where things land as we as we keep moving forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, that has been a, a you know a, a wonderful opportunity to see kind of some you know how to stay grounded in industry and working with you know, industry researchers, folks in academia as well. So, uh, so, so that is certainly keeping me busy, uh, these days. Yes, sir. Well, I, I know, I know that we haven't seen the last of Tommy Pearson, the elected official. Um, I, I know you had time to think and, you know, you know, get the hanks off of you after this mm-hmm. this last election. But I know you you probably you probably you know once it's one of those things like once it get in you, it's kind of hard to say, you know, I'm just done. Especially when it ain't on your terms. Like you want to be done on your terms. <clears throat> and I know it's a lot of work out there to do. Um, you know, I always told people, you know, just in passing, you know, because I always had good conversations about you behind your back. So <clears throat> appreciate that, man. But, I appreciate that. But I always said that uh, I said we ain't seen the last of uh, Tommy Pearson, and I think he would be a good asset uh, here locally. So, you know, I don't know what you're thinking about or whatever, but, you know, let me know what you got going on, and you already know I'm going to be right there uh, with you, man. So, uh is it well, is it the last we heard of you for, for uh, p- p- politics or what? Are you going to stay in civilian life or, you know? I, I, I am not upset being a civilian. I, okay. I will say that. Okay. You know, um, God has also given me a heart to serve. Yes, sir. And, and, and so it's really about just the 
and willingness to listen and see where I can be of best service. Yes, sir. Um, as as my passion for people, as my passion to see communities thrive, you know, as as my passion to uh, see people doing great things, you know, as as that passion, if that leads me to wherever, yeah, you know. Certainly willing to listen and, and have various conversations. So, um, well, so, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, <laughs> what's next. I I know you ain't. I know you ain't staying away too long. You know we'll let you have a break, but um, we're gonna find something for you to do. What? <laughs> I appreciate that, man. I appreciate that because you know <clears throat> if anyone knows uh, that service and what is needed for service. Yeah. And I think a fellow servant like yourself, mm-hmm. when, when I hear that from somebody like you, that means something. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. so I, I appreciate it because you know what goes into it. Oh, yeah. You know, you, oh, you know yeah. the sacrifice. You know what it takes. You know, I because I just saw this quote right before we started, mm-hmm. man, and it, it resonated with me. It said, we have to stop giving leadership positions to the practice squad. Hey. And, and I and I just and that just it made me smile. Man. <laughs> and and I and I probably should just leave it there. <laughs> hey, that's the mic drop right there. But <laughs> hey. But it hey, it's a it's a powerful statement, man. And and it's it holds and it holds so true, man, especially in the times we in right now, man. We we need strong leadership. We need we need strong leadership, uh, and we need right. people that are that are truly here for the people, man. We need uh, thoughtful people in these positions, man, because you know the the days are just doing things, man. Um, they need to be done with, you know. Uh, and we 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 dealing with a lot, man. We dealing with so much crime. We dealing with poverty, and a lot of these issues aren't new issues. Um, the, these are things that just haven't really been taken on head on. Um, mm-hmm. and, and like I said, we need some, some, we need, yes, <laughs> we sir. need to put the starters in man <laughs> and, 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 and stop playing with, uh, with our community, man. So you got, you got it. You got any, uh, final words for, for our, uh, our audience before you leave, man, where can they find you on social media? Or, you know? Um, so I am at, Tommy Pearson Jr. So I E on Tommy and Pearson. Okay. So at Tommy Pearson Jr. That's my Twitter. That's how you can find me on Facebook or, or what have you. Um, I still have a website that at some point I'm going to uh, switch to, 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 to make it say some other stuff. That's right. It's at PearsonJr.com. Yes, sir. Uh, PearsonJr.com. And you know, however I can be of assistance in helping us to move uh, the community forward, I am all in. And so while I don't want this thing to be about me, I, I want it to be about how we can collectively come together to make North County, make St. Louis County, make this region, make this state, make the nation uh, what it needs to be. And, and so whatever role that we can come together and play together uh, is a conversation that I want to have. Absolutely. And, and, and feel free, feel free to reach out to me uh, and, and we can move that forward. So I just want to say to you, man, I, I, this, again, this is a podcast that is needed because the, the more we can educate people, the more we can educate them on the issues, yes, sir. on, you know, the candidates on, elected leadership on sure. whatever the case may be, I think the better we are as a community. Absolutely. And so I commend you for, for taking this on yeah. and, and however I can help be some wind in your sail. Yes, sir. Help you move forward, man. I'm gonna de- hey, I'm gonna be calling. I'm gonna be calling you to take over the host sometime for me, man. So hey, get you know, get ready. Hosts need to be able to, to take a break and a vacation. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get, hey, get ready. We gonna we gonna definitely link up, man. And I appreciate sure. you, man. Always being a good friend. Um, being a straight shooter with me, man, and uh, a, a supporter. Um, uh, and yes, and you know, man, anything that you have going on. Uh, let me know, and you know I'll definitely be here for you. 
tuned in to the Politics Podcast, your home for St. Louis politics. So we're going to go ahead and get up out of here. Had a great show. Uh, I appreciate uh, Representative, former state representative, Reverend Tommy Pearson Jr. for uh, hanging out with us on Sunday, man. This holiday weekend, man. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate our audience for sticking with us for four weeks. We're going to keep this going. Um, make it bigger and better every week. Um, looking forward to a, uh, some more awesome guests. Um, we're going to be educating the community on all the different issues that's coming up, conversations that we need to have. This is the platform for you. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Facebook Live. We're on Facebook Live right now. Uh, we're on YouTube. Everything is the Politics Podcast. I, I didn't misspell politics. It's L-O-U for a reason. I'm from the Lou and I'm proud. Um, you can find me on Twitter. Um, you can catch this podcast on Podbean. You can catch it on 88.1 The Truth, Internet Radio, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, Amazon Music, and Spotify. So it's no excuse. You can catch us everywhere, man. We appreciate you all. Until next week, we're going to holler. We out this thing. Peace.